Thank you for joining us today to learn about the ACLS HBCU Faculty Fellowships and Grants Opportunity. We'll start with a brief overview of ACLS, who we are. We'll discuss the ways in which ACLS supports scholarship. Finally, we'll end with more details on the application and review process for the HBCU Faculty Fellowships and Grants Opportunity. ACLS, the American Council of Learned Societies, is a private nonprofit organization that has been around for over 100 years, since 1919. Many of you might be familiar with our fellowship and grant making activities, but another core component of our work is that we're a federation of 80 scholarly societies. Our members span just about every area of the humanities and include large societies such as the American Historical Association and the American Anthropological Association and smaller associations such as the American Society for Aesthetics and the Austrian Studies Association. Our mission, whether it's through our work as a federation of these societies or through offering grants and fellowships to individual scholars, is to advance humanistic studies across all humanities and interpretive social science fields. This rather busy diagram shows that at ACLS, we aim to position ourselves at the intersection of schools, scholars, societies, and even systems. And we offer programming that touches on all of these areas. For our purposes today, we'll be focusing on the orange circle, on ACLS's work supporting individual scholars through fellowships and grants. ACLS offers a variety of fellowship and grant programs. In 2022, we offered 13 and provided over 25 million in support to approximately 300 awardees. Our fellowship and grant competitions employ a peer review process, and I'll talk more about that later. But in 2022, nearly 600 peer reviewers offered their time and insights to support this process. One note is that we encourage anyone considering applying for the HBCU fellowship or grant to also apply to any ACLS opportunity for which you are eligible. Please see our website, acls.org, to learn more about the other opportunities we offer. So as we zoom in a bit to you and to what brings you here today, we often get the questions, why and whether to apply. We encourage you to apply for a variety of reasons. First and probably the most obvious is funding. Our goal is to support humanistic research and we hope that our funding allows you to move your project forward. Another reason to apply is the refinement of your ideas to support your work more broadly. As is often said, writing is thinking, and we hope that the very process of crafting and distilling your work and argument in the application process helps you to move your work forward. The translation of ideas and the engagement with scholars go hand in hand. Our peer review process is interdisciplinary, meaning your work might be reviewed by someone within your discipline, and it will surely be reviewed by scholars outside of your discipline. We therefore encourage you to think of this as a conversation you're having with colleagues, a conversation in which your goal is to highlight the broader humanistic significance of your work. If you're a historian of the US, for example, the reviewers are looking to see the resonances of your project beyond US history and beyond the discipline of history. Why does your work matter and to whom? I want to be clear that our starting point here at ACLS is that your work does matter. That is not in doubt but part of the work of crafting your application is making this importance explicit. Let's now focus on the HBCU Faculty Fellowships and Grants Program. One question we're often asked is, why HBCUs? Until recently, ACLS tended to support scholars at different career stages. For example, untenured scholars or graduate students, not according to institution type. However, for this program, we're focusing on HBCU faculty to recognize the outsized role HBCUs play in the American higher education system, the disproportionate work HBCUs and HBCU faculty do in educating first-generation students and students of color. HBCU faculty do this work, which is the work of teaching, mentorship, and service, while also contributing meaningful scholarship to their disciplines. And we aim to recognize the way HBCU faculty do this work, often in the context of historic and systemic underfunding. I'd like to briefly offer some context on the program's origins. This program was created in consultation with HBCU administrators and faculty. 
In the summer of 2022, ACLS held seven focus groups with, off, with over 35 HBCU faculty members from public and private institutions, from large and small schools, and in fields ranging from history to education to philosophy. We were interested in understanding two things. First, the teaching, learning, and research context of these institutions, because we know that HBCUs are not a monolith, and second, we were interested in the types of fellowships or grant opportunities that would be helpful to faculty. Our goal was to listen, to learn, and to be responsive. So we tried our best to include as many of the suggestions we heard into this offering. One thing to note is that this is a pilot. It's a three-year pilot, but it's still a pilot. Therefore, as you're applying, if there are features you're interested in or that would be helpful to you, please let us know. We aim to continue to be responsive, to evaluate the program, and to make changes where possible. Along those lines, we hope ACLS will offer this opportunity forever, but we don't know what the future will hold. So if you're on the fence about whether to apply, we encourage you to do so. Let's turn now to the specifics of the program. ACLS is offering up to eight fellowships of up to $50,000, and up to 12 grants of up to $10,000 each. If you're awarded a grant, the work must be completed in 12 to 15 months. And if you're awarded a fellowship, the work proposed must be completed in a 15 to 27 month term. One thing to note is that if you apply for a fellowship, let's say, and you propose to complete your project in 15 months, that will be as competitive as someone aiming to complete their work in 27 months. In other words, help us understand the specific needs and timeline that will help you accomplish the work you seek to do. If you're considering whether to apply for a fellowship or a grant, we encourage you to think about the scope and stage of your project. If, for example, your project is smaller in scale, or perhaps it's in an earlier stage, like a pilot, you might consider applying for a grant. However, if you have a larger project that requires more of your time, or a project that is further along in development, then you might consider applying for a fellowship. Please note that grants require no time off, but fellowships require the equivalent of four course releases. This time can be taken during the academic year in the form of a course release, or during the summer in lieu of summer salary, or even to su supplement a sabbatical. We're quite flexible on how this time can be distributed, and we encourage you to contact us at fellowships at acls.org with questions about your specific situation. Regardless of whether you apply for a grant or fellowship, both offer flexible support, meaning that they cover a range of expenses. For example, if you want funds to travel to an archive and write a monograph, we can support that. Or if you want funds to pay an honorarium to a collaborator or funds to train research assistants, we can support that. If you need childcare or elder care in order to do your work, we can support that as well. Or let's say you need event space and food for a community partnership. We can support that. These are just a few examples, but the key takeaway is that our goal is to help you move your work forward. And we recognize that the needs of each faculty member and each project will vary. Both the fellowship and grant are non-residential, so you are able to do your work from anywhere in the world that makes sense for you. And both support flexible products, meaning that we view scholarship broadly, whether you plan to produce a scholarly article, a podcast, a mural, open educational resource materials, or something else. There are only two caveats. First, any text produced about teaching and learning must be focused on a post-secondary context. K-12 resources are not eligible. The second caveat is that in keeping with ACLS's mission of supporting the humanities and interpretive social sciences, projects must engage substantively with research in the humanities or interpretive social sciences. Finally, you are able to apply to both a fellowship and a grant in the same year, but you must submit separate projects for each application. Regarding eligibility, we have three criteria. First, we require that you hold an MA or PhD in a humanistic or social science field. However, we can be flexible on this. For example, if you have a PhD in organizational management, but have been teaching rhetoric and communication courses for the past four years, then you could be eligible. We encourage you to email us at fellowships at acls.org with eligibility questions. 
second, to be eligible, you must be primarily employed at an HBCU, but you may be tenured on the tenure track or a contingent faculty member. However, you must remain primarily employed at an HBCU for the duration of your fellowship or grant. Finally, one of the pieces of feedback we received in the focus groups was that participants at all career stages wanted professional development opportunities. So the final criteria is that you are available for occasional professional development programming. Let's talk now about the application. We see you as whole scholars who have teaching, service, and research commitments. And our goal in our application is to provide opportunities for you to represent your obligations and interests holistically. To that end, the application features questions about your service and teaching obligations so that we may better understand your research aims in context. The fellowship application is slightly longer than the grant application, but both require an application form, a short research proposal in which you discuss your project and its broader humanistic significance, a work plan in which you operationalize your ideas or tell us what you intend to do and when, and a budget. One thing we encourage you to keep in mind as you craft your application is the difference between an idea and a project. Your research is steeped in humanistic and social science ideas, and in your proposal, you're positioning these ideas in a broader context. And while ideas are central to your work, our aim at ACLS is to fund projects. Projects have a beginning, a middle, and an end. We encourage you to articulate what stage your project is in and how the funds from the fellowship or grant will support this particular stage of your project. The additional application components are meant to help you further articulate your project beyond the central idea, prompting you to think about timeline, feasibility, and other important project parameters. You may find templates for the work plan and budget on the ACLS website. We do not require reference letters, nor do we require institutional statements upon applying. However, if you do receive an award, we will require a brief form to sign by an administrator at your institution that confirms you are eligible to accept the fellowship or grant. Our goal is to make this process worthwhile to you and your institution. We know that writing a fellowship or grant application takes time. That's time away from teaching, service, scholarship, and other aspects of your life. Therefore, if you are awarded a fellowship or grant, your institution will also receive a $2,500 grant. Your administration may use these funds in whatever way it chooses. For example, it might be to support humanities programming, or it could be to offset a cost related to a course release. It is up to your institution. In addition, if you make it to the finalist round, but you are not ultimately awarded a fellowship or grant, you will receive a $500 research grant to use in whatever way you choose. As you prepare to apply, we encourage you to attend webinars and office hours with program officers. And finally, apply. The application deadline, as a reminder, is November 2nd at 9 p.m. Eastern. Applications are available at ofa.acls.org. Unfortunately, the deadline is not flexible, so we encourage you to log on to the portal early to troubleshoot any technical issues that might arise. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation on the ACLS HBCU Faculty Fellowships and Grants Opportunity. We wish you the very best in your application. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at fellowships at acls.org.